Hi. I'm Patricia Polacco, and I write and illustrate children's picture books. Um, what you're seeing me do now is something that all of us should be doing many times a day. You notice I'm foaming up my hands. This is very warm water. And they say you should uh, lather up your hands for the length of time that you're singing happy birthday. So happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday dear Patricia, happy birthday to moi. All right, now I'm going to rinse it off with some hot water. That's But probably you and your families have heard our country, actually the world for that matter, is in a bit of a crisis because of a tiny little microbe, a tiny little germ called COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Now, what you kids need to know, you're probably not going to get it. Uh, your parents won't, and even if they did, they won't be sick for long because actually the survival rate of this is pretty high. But you do have to be careful and you've probably learned that you can't go to your schools anymore and be around your fellow students and friends. Even when you go out to play, you're probably not going to be playing with friends. You're not having play dates. You're probably pretty much stuck at home. Well, if it's any consolation to you, so am I. Uh, I'm, I'm home with these people. These are my, I have 10 cats in my house. I have a stinking little dog that I absolutely adore. But I'm home and I've been uh, writing and drawing and doing things that kind of feed my soul and make me happy. And that's what I suggest you do too. But I thought today I might tell you the story behind some of the books that I've written. Um, here, follow me, I'm gonna come over here. My assistant Penny is filming me, and we are being very careful to be over six feet apart. Now usually when I see Penny, I kiss her and hug her and hold her, but alas, we don't do that. Not because we don't care about each other, of course we do, but we have to be careful of transmitting this bug. So that's why you're being asked to stay home and not be around friends and not do what you usually do. The, the, the country is trying very hard to stop this from spreading. Anyway, I thought I'd begin today, though, by talking about, I think, one of my favorite subjects, which is my rotten, red-headed older brother. As you know, I've written two books about him. This was the first one. Where's the second one? This is the second one. But I've written another, and this is about how my brother discovered girls. Oh, you're gonna love it. Adults probably won't, but you will. But I thought I would tell you the real truth about my brother. How many of you out there, let me see your hands, raise your hands, have absolutely putrefyingly horrible siblings? Okay, I'm looking, yeah. Looks like an awful lot of you do. Well, my brother was the bane of my existence. I mean, I was a fairly nice little kid. My brother, oh my Lord, he didn't take baths. He wouldn't let my mother wash his clothes. His room stunk. I mean, literally the health department knocked on our door one day and took great interest in his room. They wanted to close us down. So the, the book that I'm writing, actually they'll be doing the color finishes on soon, is called Go Ask Ozzy. Now, I've done a drawing here of my brother that is so accurate. Let me see if I can find it. Now, what you're looking at is what is called a, um, a rough dummy. So the drawings in this are all in black and white. Um, but my brother, I have a particular drawing in here of him that is so my brother. Uh, this is when the health department came over to his room. Do you notice one of them is hurling in a bucket? I mean, if my brother were as filthy today as he was then, the coronavirus couldn't survive. The coronavirus literally taking one whiff of him would fall on the ground gasping for air. Here is a perfect picture of what my brother was really like. 
He had his own flies. He was always picking his nose. His teeth were green and slimy. His clothes were so dirty they would stand up when he took them off. His bedroom had never been clean. There were things under his bed that the health department was interested in. Actually, the health department was interested in our whole house because of my brother. But here's the thing. This story is about the day my brother discovered a particular little girl and her name, uh, oh here, I've got to show you how he, he started dressing up. Uh, one day, actually we didn't know what was bringing the miracle, but here's what the room looked like all of a sudden. He cleaned it up. Why would my brother do such a thing, we were thinking. I mean, literally, we had cats, and the cats would go in his room and throw up. I mean, it was, it was bad. But one day, he actually took a bath. He put a whole bunch of pomade on his hair. Now, you kids wouldn't know what pomade is, but it was this sticky stuff that they used to put on their hair, and they built their hair high up. This is clear back in the 50s. They would call the style you see a waterfall, and in back it was called a DB, a duck's butt. But anyway, we found out that a new kid was the soda jerk at Ozzy's Bar and Grill, which was in the pharmacy just a block away from where we lived. So all of us showed up to see who that new kid was, and guess what? It was Richie. Ozzy gave my brother his first job as a soda jerk at the Elmwood Pharmacy lunch counter. Well, that's what the story is about. But my brother, as it turned out, I had a crush in school on this one boy. His name was Johnny Parsons. And Johnny never gave me the time of day. I mean, he just, he, he would walk by me. He wouldn't even talk to me. I remember just thinking, oh, I want to, I want to impress him somehow. And uh, we had a woman that came to our school named Dart Tinkham. Don't you love that name? Who gave dance lessons. Well, then they decided to have a great big dance at the school. And I realized, I mean, I did ballet. I knew ballet very well, but I didn't know how to do any kind of ballroom dancing. Well, as it turns out, this is Johnny Parsons absolutely ignoring me. I was trying everything I could to, to get him to look at me, and he just didn't. Anyway. I took my story to Ozzy, because everybody in our neighborhood did. And he said, you know, I know a kid that's a fabulous dancer. He and his girlfriend are practicing upstairs right now. So he said, he'll teach you. He took me upstairs. Guess who that fabulous dancer was? My rotten, red-headed older brother. I mean, he had actually become popular. I mean, what's the matter with people? How could they think anything about my brother was even the least bit socially redeeming? But by then, he had started to bathe and comb his hair, and Diane Scalapino had become his girlfriend. At any rate, my brother took it upon himself to teach me how to do rock and roll dancing. So I used to go upstairs every night after school and practice with my brother. Oh, I wish you could have seen us. I mean, we were fabulous. A rock and roll dancing is amazing because you get thrown around and the music is lively. I mean, there's nothing like it, nothing like it. Well, to make a long story short, the big dance came and nobody came to ask me to dance until my brother pulled me out of my seat, dragged me out on the floor, and he started dancing with me. Oh, we danced like there was nobody business. And eventually he threw me up in the air because that's what he was good at. He could throw me. Threw me up in the air, and I landed in the arms of a dream boat. A boy that was certainly better looking than Johnny Parsons was. I landed in his arms and blinked my eyes and thought, oh, he's the most beautiful boy I'd ever seen in my life. Do you know who he turned out to be? Michael McDonald, a boy in my class that had been really nice to me, but 
I haven't paid much attention to him because he always wore braces and and his hair was never combed, so I didn't think much of him. But anyway, he had changed. All the braces were off from his teeth. He was wearing contact lenses. He had beautiful blue eyes. And he and I danced the night away, all thanks to my brother teaching me how to dance. My brother went on, of course, if you can believe this, to become the father of eight redheaded children. Uh, as for Michael McDonald, he went on to become a very famous singer. I think he was with the Doobie Brothers, I'm not sure. Ask your mom and dad to tell you about Michael McDonald. That was my first dreamboat boyfriend. Oh. So that's what this story is about. I guess the focus of this story is to help you understand your brothers and sisters may at this point in time be the worst things that have ever happened to you. You probably lie in bed and think of ways to get rid of them, but I'm here to tell you, eventually, they're going to end up being very, very good friends. You'll see. Thank you.